student at Howard University. Um, and, I'm and I'm also a campus reporter for the Hilltop Student News Publication. So my, my question was, as a, student, as a student at an HBCU, the banning of books targeting marginalized groups, as people in your positions, um, how do you guys propose our generation combating the censorship happening today? Combat what? The censorship happening today. Well, first, let me just say to you, I was a reporter at the Fan Ewing when I was in college. And actually, my first published piece was in my HBCU student newspaper. And <laughs> And so, 10 years, I'm going to be looking for your book in bus boys. <laughs> um, but I, I think that college students in particular, particularly HBCU students, have historically been at the forefront of really fighting every major anti-racist battle in this country's history. And, and I, I think that Certainly, Howard students and other students around this city can be organizing not only banned book clubs, uh, but they could be figuring out ways to, to organize with teachers, organize with parents, organize against school district leaders. Uh, they could be figuring out, using their research skills to figure out who exactly is banning each book. Right? They could be figuring out what are the leverage points <laughs> to pressure that person to stop. Uh, and, and so I just, I just want, I think college students in particular have a tremendous amount of power, have a long history of activism. And, and, and you know, actually when I think of this movement to defend teachers, you know, as, as the sister just said, this movement to, to defend librarians, this, this movement to defend young people, I've actually been looking for college students to, to stand up and to organize. And, and I think it can be Howard students at the forefront of that. My question is twofold. First of all, um, being in Congress, do you know what's going on with the HR 40 legislation? Uh, you know, I know that last in March it was passed in the House, I believe. So, what is going on? Are you um, privy to what's going on with that legislation? Yeah, so H.R. 40, for the first time in 40 years, finally passed out of the committee. H.R. 40 is the, um, the bill that is, is, a, is a resolution for the study of slavery. I mean, it's the study of reparation. Study of, the study for reparations, that's what it is. It's the study for reparations. To study what that could look like, how we could go about it, um, it took 40 years for this to be voted out of the um, committee, and now... You said it took 40 years just to approve the study. The, it took 40 years to approve the study, but to, just out of the committee. Out of the committee. It, it, it hasn't come to the floor yet to vote on for the whole, for the whole uh, uh, House of Representatives. So we haven't gotten there yet. We are still pushing. The, um, the author um, now, which is Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, she has been pushing really, really hard. I work with her. She's my chairwoman. I'm her vice chair of the uh, uh, Crime Committee in Congress um, um, uh, on Judiciary, uh, the Judiciary Committee. We're pushing hard to get that to move, but also um, there's also legislation that our office is about to um, introduce coming soon. This is, it's a reparations bill. It's actually a full reparations bill. So hers is the study. Mine is what reparations could look like, give us cash, give us money for, um, for, for uh, to help us, um, uh, uh, for, for money for housing, money for small business, the capital for small businesses, healthcare and, and um, education, putting money into HBCU so we can go for free, et cetera, et cetera. So, it's, um, so anyway, so that's coming. So that, but that's where we are. The issue is not everybody is, everybody is just not on board still with the study to, um, about reparations because it still makes people feel uncomfortable because it says that something ha something bad happened in this country, this land of the free, home of the brave. Right, and, and I want to also say um, 
uh, Mr. Kendi, stem from the beginning was a masterpiece. And, oh, my question, I just had to tell him that, give him his props, okay? So, uh, also, my other question is, uh, I would like to meet with you about the reparations uh, bill in St. Louis. You're going to do that in St. Louis, right? Is that what you're talking about? The bill will be introduced here, but we will have that St. Louis oh. event when we get ready to, yeah, yeah, we're doing that up. But that, it, 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 it makes me think about, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, that makes me think about, um, when you were talking about the ban, the banning of the books and, and like what happens, I think about how my grandfather, um, and I spoke about this on the House floor one day, I talked about how after I gave this speech, so my grandfather, my mother's father, he served in World War II. He was discharged, came home back to, uh, South, uh, to uh, South Carolina, Within a short period of time, he was said to have looked upon a white woman. The Klan was coming for him. This is the story that we were told. The Klan was coming for him. He hopped on the first bus to St. Louis, which was where his buddy that he served with um, in World War II lived. And um, that happened to be my grandmother's brother. And so that's where I came from. Um, and a similar thing happened um, to another one of my grandparents. So, uh, but I think about when I told that story and I talked about, hey, like they messed up my grandfather's last name when he went into the military and didn't care to fix his name. And so that messed up our family after that because we did have, we have this new name because they just decided not to fix his last name even though he said, hey, that's not how you spell my name. But the thing about that is this, when I said, the thing is, that was never our name in the first place. Like we didn't, my, my ancestors didn't come from Nigeria. They didn't come through the Middle Passage. They didn't come th that transatlantic slave uh, trade with that last name. This last name came from we know from the slave owners that um, that own my ancestors. And I had people reach out and say, I never heard that before. You, where did you get your last name? What do you mean? The amount of people who reached out, and so that's one thing about banning of books, because. It's that history that's vitally important. It's important to who we are. That is who we are. You know, it's, it's what happened to us and that should not be erased. It should not be silenced. It happened and we walk through that every single day. And not only that, that is going to be the legacy of our children's children because it's who we are. And so to ban those books that would actually speak to that and tell that true history is egregious. Congressman Bush, it's, I think we've, we've also talked about how you can see your story in other books. And what's fascinating is my grandfather, uh, who also was in World War II and, and came home to Georgia and was run out of Georgia by white segregationists and, 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 and went up to to New York. And, and so, you know, I would be reading your story, you'd be reading out my story, and, you know, we'd see ourselves and, and connect uh, and, and recognize the power of our shared history. Uh, and I think, again, that's the power, you know, books, because it allows us to recognize our shared humanity. Because when you recognize a shared history, you're recognizing the shared humanity. You know, when you are covering up a history um, that affects a whole entire people, when you are controlling a narrative, his, when we're banning books, especially books that are about history, you can't change what happened. You can't change that history. You know, that history has to be taught, number one, so we don't repeat it. It has to be taught so that people can grow. Um, and it has to be taught so that we can repair if there is harm that, that if there is harm done. And all of that must happen. And this country, um, this society has to own up to that and has to address it head on. That is how we build this country. History has to include the ugly parts. It has to include the ugly parts. If the ugly parts happen, then it must include it. So if we don't want to have a history that includes um, hatred and racism, misogyny, bigotry, you know, xenophobia, transphobia, then we need to fix it and not be that country now. Let me go on the other side. Is there, is there ever a case?
is for You know, I would I won't say that uh, it, banning a book necessarily, um, but are there places where maybe some books are, you know, are we looking at what's, uh, what may be appropriate, you know? Uh, so I, I won't speak to necessarily if they're, if it's about banning the book so much as it, um, you know, you turn on a television and it gives you a, 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 you know, tells you what audience that this particular movie or show is for, you know, maybe it, it would, I could see more of that not necessarily saying that we have to ban this book. Um, we have to restrict access to it um, to uh, to those who would um, actually be able to benefit from it. Because the other the thing is, why are we banning it? Are we banning it because it hurts someone's feelings or makes someone uncomfortable or we want to hide a truth? Or are we banning it because this is just not appropriate for a particular age group? As an author, when you banning books. Well, what does that do to you inside? What is, where does that make you go inside? It, 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 it actually takes me back to, to high school when, when I wasn't reading. And I just immediately think about the fact that some of these books, if not most of these books that are being banned are the types of books that I wanted to read, that I needed to read, that could have gotten me reading, you know, when I was in high school. So it, in a way, it angers me. Is there, to, to go on the other side of the coin, as an author, do you think there's ever a case for banning? Well, I don't think any book should be banned from the library. Uh, and, and as someone who studies the history of racist ideas, some of the most, I've studied some of the worst and most vicious things that have ever been said about black people. I found those in those books in libraries. And I think we need to have an accounting of what people are thinking at any given moment. And so I don't think, <laughs> I don't think books should be banned even certainly in libraries. Where do you think, where do you think the biggest uh, push for, for banning the books right now is coming from? Oh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's largely from political operatives. I, I, I don't think, I think certainly there are everyday people who have been told, who've been manipulated into thinking that, that books that deal with racism or sexism or, or transphobia are, are harmful to their kids, but they were told that. They were manipulated into believing that, largely by political operatives who, who are trying to make this into a wedge issue, are trying to galvanize people uh, since they haven't delivered for those people, particularly economically. How does that, how does that stop? What's the, counter, what's the counter to that? How does that stop? I think one way it could stop is education. Uh, and, and I think part of the challenge is, is there's so much ignorance about racism, about sexism, about black people, about American history. And, and I, I think the more people understand uh, just how vital it is to know and to read and to be and to grow. I, I think they'll be less likely to allow for these books to be made. As an author, uh, as an author, have you seen uh, instances where books you've written have, have people have tried to abandon or remove them? So yeah, the Pan America just came out with a report on, on I think Monday, and in their report, they found that seven of my books have been banned recently, or challenged. Do you look at that as, and, and see, you know, not, not as something that upsets you, but as something maybe that it is kind of like a, a source of pride in that you're talking about something that is affecting people? I write books for people to, to, to read. I write books for people to transform themselves. I write books for people to inform themselves. And so it's, I, for me to know that p some people aren't able to do that because my books are being banned is not something that in any way brings me joy. Thank you.